How's it going? Awesome. Good. Do I need to talk into this thing? Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. All right. Um, I'm here to talk about leveling up as a developer. Kind of comes from my own experience. I uh, started out in uh, college just tinkering around with HTML and CSS. Well, actually, like middle school with HTML and CSS. Next thing I know, I'm doing some random code work and Today, I am a professional developer, so it's been a long, long journey for myself, and I hope that I can help you guys on your journey. Uh, be warned, I don't try to shield anyone from the truth. If for whatever reason you are a hardcore WordPress fanatic, I suggest you leave, because I don't necessarily have the best things to say about WordPress all the time. Um, so I'm going to do a little experiment with you guys. It's going to be kind of fun. I know it's right before lunch. You guys are probably a little tired, but I need everyone to stand up, please. All right, so what you're going to do, you're going to put your arms, you're going to put your hands in a fist. You're going to put them on your waist, spread your arms out a little, your legs out a little bit, and puff out your chest. It's called the superhero pose. <laughs> They say if you do this for five or 10 minutes a day, your ego gets boosted and your morale goes up. <laughs> you guys can sit down, thank you. We are all awesome. Be awesome. All right, so who am I? My name is Roy. I currently uh, do WordPress development for Disney. Uh, before you ask me, yes, it's pretty freaking awesome. And no, I'm not going to take you to Disneyland. Uh, I'm the co-founder also of a company called Art Control. Uh, we have a web app called Code Cavalry. You might have seen us outside uh, where you can get code help uh, basically for about a dollar a minute uh, for anything you need. Um, I've been using WordPress for a very, very long time. And uh, as both a developer, I've done SEO for a while. Um, so WordPress has been my... I don't, I don't want to say my bread and butter, but it's definitely been part of my repertoire for uh, the better part of a decade. All right, so I said artisan. What's an artisan? Um, as the definition uh, from the dictionary says, a worker in a skilled trade, especially one that involves making things by hand. Now, who in here thinks that describes them? Building things by hand. Now, I know you're not sitting there over a you know, hot fire, but you're using your hands to work, right? I mean, you're coding, you're changing settings, you're doing something with your hands, and ultimately there's a product in the end. There's a website, there's a web app, there's a mobile app, there's something. There's something to show for all the work you just put in, uh, all the hours you put in using your hands. So let's talk about WordPress. Uh, an artisan really takes development to the next level. A, an artisan wants to build stuff from scratch and loves a challenge. Um, when you think of artisan, or when I say artisan, I think of someone who, like a blacksmith, or someone who, at the end of a day, or at the end of a week, looks at what they've created and is like, man, I am God, I've just created this thing. <laughs> and they sell it. That's the greatest part of it. They're like, I have so much love for this thing I just created, but it's yours. And they do that time and time and time again. And you take so much pride in your work every single time. And I know um, it works on both levels for both designers and developers. I've talked to designers who will take a lawyer's website and go crazy with it. And they're like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever designed. And I'm like, it's a lawyer's website. <laughs> they're like, no, this is by far the best thing I've ever designed. And I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, it is beautiful. And the same thing for developers. Developers especially, because we have the biggest egos in the world, will tell you everything we code is by far the best thing out there in the world, period. <laughs> Our code is by far the best and always will be until tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so let me ask, do you want to be an artisan? Um, before you start taking more notes and before you start taking down what websites I show you, ask yourself, do you even want to be an artisan? My path took me on a path, took me from learning HTML in a weekend with a book when I was in middle school to now developing at Disney. I started as a child playing with Legos. Um, I liked breaking things and putting them back together. And I still like breaking things and then making them better. 
I look at someone else's code, I'm like, no, it's not good enough, let me rebuild it, and it could be good. Um, that's who I am. But there's nothing wrong with not being an artisan. I mean, a lot of people I talk to in the community sell websites for, let's say, a lower price point, and they're fine with that. They're happy because they still make their money, they can pay their bills, and that's fine. It's not that they need it, they don't have pride in their work, it's that they're, what, what they do is fine by them. So maybe they don't need to take that next step. Maybe you know, downloading a theme, installing some plugins, making sure everything is configured properly for that client is fine by you. And you can build a website and get it out there within 20 hours. You don't need to be an artisan. You can do what you're doing, I'm not gonna judge you, that's fine. But I'm talking about leveling up here. So let's start from the basics. Um, tools, thank you. A good artisan has the best tools to match their workflow. Um, I'm not saying that these tools that I mentioned, because these are what I use. I use uh, Sublime, Coda, Transmit. Uh, I use Desktop Server, Gravity Forms. Um, these are things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm not saying they're the best things, but they work really well for my workflow, meaning I'm very efficient at, let's say, creating a website and that has forms, because I have Desktop Server, Coda, and Gravity Forms. Those three things allow me to code a website with a form very, very quickly. So find the best tools that you think, or that you know are gonna be the best for your workflow, and keep on looking for new tools. Don't stop, don't say, hey, I have Coda, it works really well, I'm gonna stop here. I just started learning PHP Storm. I, I know everyone's been loving it for a while, I have been hesitant to try it, but I said, well, let me talk to someone who's using it and see what they're doing with it, and maybe I can incorporate it. So I'm starting to slowly incorporate it into my workflow, and I'm finding that Maybe eventually, in a, you know, about a month, it'll be my, my go-to IDE, my go-to editor. Another thing is pay for your tools. I know a lot of people here, or in general, want free tools, like even Sublime is free, which is great. I mean, you gotta donate, and you should donate, but for the most part, people want free things, and they want them to work well. I guarantee you, that it'll work 10 times better if you pay the little bit of money that it costs, because you're just gonna make that money up. If you're a consultant, just, bill it to the next client. Just say, you know what, there's a $100 fee for your website. Um, that's because I needed this IDE. Be upfront about it. Most people will be happy to pay for it because you're gonna be that much more efficient and it works that much better with your workflow. So I highly recommend playing with as many tools as possible, finding the ones that work well with your workflow, and then just paying for them. Don't, don't skimp out. All right, code. Step out of your comfort zone. I know a lot of you guys like uh, minimal HTML, some CSS, maybe a little bit of JavaScript. Step out of that. Don't, don't, don't back yourself into a corner. Stop copy-pasting blocks of code from websites. <laughs> and Stack Overflow is not always the best answer. <laughs> um, Are you gonna make these slides available? Yeah, they'll be available. By the way, I talk pretty fast and I like communication. If you do have any questions as I'm going, just feel free to raise your hand. I'm not gonna wait till the end to answer questions. Um, so challenge yourself. Stop using Stack Overflow to get big blocks of code. Uh, they might not even be that good of code. You might copy paste something and it might not work or it might be outdated or it might not work with uh, whatever you actually need to do. I'd say the best thing I've learned is to start getting granular with what you're looking for. Google Foo. Um, so this is kind of along the same lines. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, you want to code a slider. And now I know most of you be like, well, there's plugins for that. Well, let's say you want to code one. <laughs> um, and you Google, how do I code a slider? Well, that's a great thing to Google, and you'll probably find a tutorial or two about how to, how to code a slider. But I'm going to challenge you guys to go granular. What are some granular things that are within a slider? How about a fade in function? You know, fading in is, an, is one little aspect of the slider function or a slide to animate from going from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen or vice versa. That's part of being a slider, right? So don't Google how to, how to code a slider. Google how do I make something slide across the screen? Because then you're going to learn a piece of code that's very minute and very particular, very specific, that you'll probably end up using later. But if you just Google how do I code a slider, and you're gonna copy paste this block of code, you're not gonna get anything out of that. You're gonna get a block of code that you're gonna maybe try to find later. But if you learned 
slide left or animate, things like that, you're going to end up using those. And that's just going to be part of your brain. It's going to get stored in there much better. And it, you're going to be able to come back to it. And you're also going to know it exists, right? So um, for example, I was in an interview my last job. And someone asked me if uh, jQuery fade out has a callback function. And I was like, I have no idea. But I know fade out exists. I know how to do it. And and I told, my, I told the guy that was interviewing me, I'm like, give me two seconds on Google. I know exactly the web page I need to go to. I know the jQuery docs in and out, and I'll tell you. And he was like, you know what? That's all we need. So that's also part of it. Um, have Google, good Google foo. Understand what you're coding. And remember that every time you Google something, it's an, ex it's an sorry. Every time you Google something, it's an opportunity to learn something, right? So if you're Googling something, it's because you don't know something. And you could just copy paste it and be on your way and, and never come back to it. Or you could Google something, learn from it, and then you don't have to ever Google that thing again. Or you'll know specifically what page you need to go to or where to go for the help next time. Uh, here's another example for Google Foo that's a little more WordPress specific. Um, how to use JavaScript in a file in a WordPress theme. Um, I can't tell you how many times I go to the codex and look at WP and Q script because it has so many things inside of it. I'm like, I don't remember all of these things. Where do I put the dependencies? Where do I put where it's in, when it's in the footer? Um, surprisingly, I go there maybe not daily, but often enough. And I know where it exists. And I know to Google for it. I know to Google WP and Q script and not how to use JavaScript in a WordPress theme. So, that's one of the things that uh, I like and I think that everyone should take from. Another, another thing to step up with, debugging. Um, it's a huge, huge thing. As you're coding something, especially if you're coding from something from scratch, you want to make sure that it works. I guarantee you that not everything you code for the first time is just going to work. If it does, call me. I want to hire you. <laughs> Uh, Chrome and other web browsers have awesome web inspectors. You can inspect uh, DOM, which is the HTML, CSS styling, and even JavaScript. Learn how to use them. Don't look at your view source all the time. Don't go back to your code editor. Look at your Chrome inspector. I'd say uh, for Chrome, which is what I use, I end up coding sometimes a good chunk of code right there from the inspector, because then I'll know for a fact it's working right in my environment. And then I'll go and take what I did and, and put it into the actual code and upload it. So if it's like I need to change out a class, I need to add in a, a p tag, whatever it may be. If it's something relatively small, I'm going to do it right there in Chrome, right? And, and I'm going to uh, just bring it into my code editor after I know that it works. Um, there's a really cool feature that actually Matt Cromwell showed me. Uh, you can actually unminify CSS and JavaScript right in your Chrome inspector as well. So a lot of themes have minified CSS. And you're like, well, this text is red. How do I make it blue? Right? So and then you get this like long string of CSS that's like, I don't know where anything is. It's just one big jumble of CSS. Well, there's a little gear icon in the bottom left. And it'll help unminify that CSS so you can actually see what file it's in and where it's, where it's located. It's pretty nifty. And I've been using it uh, quite often since I found, well, since Matt told me about it. So thank you, Matt. Um, <laughs> JavaScript as well, not as good because minification usually uh, means that there's some um, concatenation as well and some other things that go on along with JavaScript. But it's a good head start sometimes, especially uh, when I'm doing like Angular work. Sometimes I don't remember what Angular file, what JavaScript file I, I defined a factory or something in. So it's really good for uh, breaking out what file something might be in. Um, there's a code, I don't know how to describe it. It's a code graduation level, I guess. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with JavaScript. But with JavaScript, usually when you're debugging, you start with console.log. And you're like, log. And then you'll put like a here. I'm here. So you know that that got fired. Or sometimes you'll make it console log a variable. So in your browser, you see what variable that, what it, what it equates to. Um, now, I've learned that as you progress as a developer, your debugging skills also debug, also uh, kind of excel. You go from console.log to there's actually a JavaScript function, which is fantastic. It's just debugger. And it's just, you just write debugger semicolon. And it'll stop your, uh, 
your browser right there. And then you have full access to whatever variables or whatever function you're in, and it stops it right there. Sometimes I'll do that. I'll say, you know what? I don't want it to run the rest of this JavaScript function. I need it to just stop here so I know what data I'm dealing with. So I'll throw in debugger. The next step after that, once you've realized how cool debugger is, there's this cool thing called breakpoints. And breakpoints are a pain in the butt sometimes to deal with when you're dealing with them in the browser. But once you figure out how to play with them, they're fantastic. Basically, it's the same thing as that debugger function I told you about, except it's in browser. So I can go, let me look at my JavaScript file. I want it to break at line 23 and 25. So I'm going to put in a breakpoint. And I'm going to make sure that every time I load the page, it breaks there so I have access to any of the data that I need right there. And what's cool about that is let's say, based on that data, I now need it to break somewhere else. With breakpoints to the browser, I can then go, OK, well, now let's break on line 50, because now I know what that data is. And now I can break again and, and again, manipulate the data. It's, uh, it's both. I do it a lot while I'm coding as well as debugging. Um, they kind of go hand in hand. I'd say with debugging, it's super critical, because sometimes you honestly don't know what data you're dealing with. You're like, I define this variable. The variable is x. I don't know what it actually comes out to, so I'm going to use this. And so that's where debugging and, and this kind of stuff comes in handy. Do you have a question? Yeah, what does a breakpoint look like in the browser? Uh, it literally has, um, so in Chrome Inspector, the web developed dev tools, you'll see your JavaScript code in the source, in the, um, in the dev tools. And then you'll see line numbers. And the breakpoint is literally a highlighted br uh, line number. OK, so in, the, in the inspector? Yeah. So you open up the inspector. You go to, I think, resources. Um, and then you go to your uh, JavaScript file that you want to look at. And then everything is line numbered. And then you just literally click on the line that you want it to break at. And then right then and there, that's where it'll break. Off to the right, there's another little sidebar. It'll show you a list of all of your breakpoints across the whole site. So you can actually look at everything you're breaking at. All right, I warn you now, the next slide's not going to be easy. <coughs> Stop using WordPress. <laughs> All right, you can learn a lot just by taking a few steps away from WordPress and trying to develop something else. So currently at work, I'm working on a bunch of WordPress stuff and a Laravel project. And I learned so much in the past few weeks, month, working on Laravel because it taught me things that I didn't really know about PHP, or it taught me Laravel more specifically, which is now just part of my repertoire. I now know enough about Laravel to be able to code for it. Um, this slide might look like blasphemy. I know that. Last time I, um, I was in WordCamp Toronto and I questioned the WordPress overlords, they actually turned off the lights on me. <laughs> it was really just the timer that timed out, but you know. <laughs> Close enough. Um, so what can you learn if you step away from WordPress? I'll tell you what I learned. I learned there's a difference between front and back end coding. So today I consider myself a primarily a front end coder. So I do a lot of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But it wasn't until I actually stepped away from WordPress and took a full time job doing a, a don't hiss at me, a .NET work, um, a, a Windows stack. Uh, that I realized that front end and back end can be completely separated. So I actually worked in the front end department. And anytime anything came along the lines that was like, Roy, here's a task for you know, displaying posts, let's say, from whatever, I'd be like, nope, back end, not me. Go away. <laughs> if you want me to make it look pretty, fine, that's me. But if you, want it, if you want me to actually grab the data from the database, I don't know .NET. I have no desire to learn .NET and C Sharp. So it's a back end thing. And that's why I really learned there's a big difference. And it also learned, I also learned uh, where my passion was. Because before, I was like, I like building websites. Great. What now? And I learned now that my passion is actually in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and not necessarily just building websites. Because building websites is a big thing, especially when you get into application building. When you're talking about large scale applications, there's huge teams that are usually involved. And everyone has their own passion. And when someone is working on what they're passionate about, you get the best work out of them. So yes, I don't like working on C Sharp work. When I do have to, I cry, and I moan, and it's horrible. So yes, I prefer working on HTML and CSS and JavaScript. And you'll find that my work in those uh, languages are a lot better. I learned about MVC architecture. 
Uh, does anyone know what MVC is here? Yeah. All right. Cool. So it's it's a pretty uh, it's it's good for frameworks. Uh, it's model view uh, controller. It's a layered way of developing. Um, I knew what it was before, but it, as soon as I stepped away from WordPress, I was like, oh, this actually makes a lot of sense. It actually made me question WordPress a lot, and um, I think it makes a lot of people question WordPress when they start learning about some of the other ways of coding, especially when it comes to MVC and everything is all separated. Um, as I said, new PHP frameworks. I learned Laravel. I, uh, I had already dabbed in Drupal, and, and I had some time to look at their newest version. Um, and the greatest thing that I got out of stepping away from WordPress was l moving away from the LAMP stack altogether. So taking PHP out of my repertoire and actually working on solely JavaScript. Um, you might know that Node.js, which is a backend uh, technology, is actually JavaScript, which is technically, a, well, more historically a front-end technology or language. So I got into Node. Um, I got into Angular. Um, and I learned a lot. And I did not touch PHP for a little bit there. And it was fantastic. Um, I loved every minute of it. I got to learn some really cool stuff. And honestly, it was because WordPress was not tying me down. I wasn't worried about the post and, and you know query loops and stuff like that. I was worried about bigger level things and what else I could learn. All right, uh, coming back to WordPress. So uh, I've talked to a lot of people uh, in my years. Um, a lot of people uh, go to WordPress or go, can't leave WordPress, and then they don't come back. And because they find something better, they find something more that they can do something cooler with. And uh, honestly, it's, uh, it's not everyone comes back. But the people that do come back, they have the best code. They give the best talks. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, uh, overall, they're great. Um, I love talking to people who move away from the WordPress community and then come back to it. Because they really make you think outside the WordPress bubble. They make you think, well, I didn't know I could do that with WordPress. And it's because they spent time away from WordPress, they were able to see the connection. Um, I'm almost out of time, but I wanted to touch on the, the dip. The dip is something that everyone goes through, whether it's a designer trying to design something new, or, it's, uh, or for a developer, it's when they have to learn something new. Any good developer will always be learning something. You can't stop learning. It's super important to never stop learning. Spend five, 10 minutes a day, X amount of hours a week, put it aside, learn something new. Whether it's you're getting paid for it or not, make sure you're learning. So the dip is that time when you have to learn something, because you're not going to get paid as much for it. You're not going to know what you're doing, but you have to learn it. So my little quick story on that is I wanted to learn AngularJS. I didn't know anything about Angular. I didn't know how to use it. But I knew WordPress really well. And it was right around the time as uh, the JSON REST API was actually a Google Summer of Code project. And I was like, all right, Ryan, this guy Ryan has this API which can help me build up an Angular thing, so I'm going to use that. And there was other APIs that existed at the time, like Thermal API, and uh, there's one other one, but they were all garbage. Uh, Ryan's was the best. So I decided to use his. I created my own theme, WordPress theme with Angular, and that's how I learned Angular. I was like, I need to learn Angular right now. How do I learn? And I think this is the best thing I've ever kind of learned how to learn, in a way, where I've learned that as a developer, you know something already. And you need to learn something new, leverage what you already know. Basically, take what you already know, find a way to connect it in some, some fashion to uh, what you want to learn, and then connect the dots. Um, I think I was at WordCamp LA talking last year. And I was talking about my Angular theme. And I got a lot of blank stares and a lot of questions. And people are like, why are you doing that? Makes no sense. Then I go to the Angular community, and they were like, why are you doing that? That makes no sense. Why would you use Angular and WordPress? And I'm like, because I know both now. I mean, that's the honest answer is I know WordPress. I know Angular now. I've learned a lot of other things, too. Uh, thanks to the API, I was able to learn React.js. And I've dabbled in uh, Backbone and stuff like that. Um, but learn what you know, or sorry, learn new things by taking what you know and connecting them. It's the easiest way to get through the dip. Because if you try to get through the dip by not leveraging what you already know, it's going to be one hell of a time. And you're not going to get there any faster. All right, so some resources. I use Coda 2 and Sublime Text. Those are both my code editors. As I said, I'm trying to get into PHP Storm. I'm not quite there yet. 
I highly recommend anyone who doesn't use Git or uh, versioning to get on versioning. GitHub is completely free for pr uh, public repositories. Throw something up there and then cr start creating versions of it. It's, it's fantastic because then when you make an edit, you can go backwards. It's, it's probably one of the biggest things to happen to development recently. I mean, versioning has been out for a long time, but GitHub has been my savior many, many times. Uh, Gravity Forms is my go-to forms plugin. Uh, just a, I know there's a couple other ones out there, like Formidable Forms and uh, Ninja Forms people love. Um, I know forms are not the hardest thing to code in the world, but I find it to be a lifesaver and a time saver to just use a plugin that does it well. And I really like Gravity Forms because it's uh, you can hook into any form uh, post uh, submission, pre submission. Their API and documentation is fantastic. Um, AWP on Facebook. So if you've leveled up a little bit and you feel like you can, you only have advanced questions to ask. There's a WordPress, a Facebook group on WordPress called Advanced WordPress. Uh, we tend to only answer questions that are advanced in nature. So if you have uh, entry level questions like basic CSS, uh, there's also an intermediate group and a beginners group. Um, but if you feel like you have an advanced question, uh, join that group. There's about 15,000 members, I think. And, uh, and there's going to be someone on there that will be able to help you. Um, Tuts Plus is one of my go-to tutorial websites. I love, I love going there and seeing what they have. So I'd recommend going there as well. Um, and that's it. You can find me online, Twitter, GitHub, Code Calvary, RoyBoy789 is where I go pretty much everywhere. Thank you. <laughs> Question. So what are you learning now or studying? What am I learning now? Uh, I, well, I mean, I, as I said, for work, I've been on a Laravel project, so I've been learning that a lot. I've been really getting into React. Uh, Angular, there's a new version of it coming out called Angular 2. So um, I just, I try my best to always keep up with what's going on. Um, obviously, it's really hard when you have a full-time job and you try doing other things, but you got to make time for it. So that's what I'm on right now. Is your Angular theme available anywhere? Completely free on GitHub. Uh, just look for me on GitHub. Everything I have on there is uh, open sourced. I also have an Angular uh, plugin, which helps you uh, leverage Angular like for specific uh, micro apps, basically, for your website. So that's in the repo and on GitHub. So feel free to get that as well. Any other questions? Yeah, right here. So um, did you broach the uh, JavaScript? Do you anything with single page web apps? Single page web app. Yeah, Code Calvary is a single page web app. It's a single page. It runs on one WordPress page. And no matter what view you're on, you're technically on one page. Um, I use Angular to build that. Um, there's other, plat other frameworks out there um, to use to create single page applications. So uh, really, it's just whatever you want to use. Any other questions? Cool, thank you guys. <laughs>